Good evening. Thank you all for joining us. Can you hear us okay over there? Um, over there, okay. I'm assuming that everyone can hear us. Um, we're here tonight for the update on the NC-12 Rodanthe Bridge Project, uh, Step Project B, 2500B. As again, this is our project update meeting for September 3rd, 2020. On incoming calls, we'd like for you to remember that microphones are muted. If you're calling in, we ask that you mute your phone. If not, we can do that for you in case you have problems. We ask you to do that during the presentation. Uh, if you wish to submit a comment or a question, we ask that you either, number one, use the chat box, or two, that you call the 855 number listed here and enter project code 8679. You'll leave a voicemail and that mail will be transcribed and sent to the project team during the meeting so that we can address your question or comment following the presentation. Tonight we'll do an introduction of the NCDOT staff in attendance. We'll do a review of past update meeting questions. These will be the questions received at our June 3rd meeting. We'll present a project update that will bring you up to the last couple of days on where we are with the project. And then we'll have questions and comments for the panel. Your DOT staff, we have Sterling Baker, who's our division engineer for uh, NCDOT Highway Division One, Pablo Hernandez, who's your resident engineer uh, on this project, uh, David Herring, David is with our design build unit. He's the project engineer uh, out of Raleigh. And I'm Diane Wilson, your public involvement officer, uh, who's here to help facilitate this meeting tonight. So this is what we heard at the June 4th, 2020 update meeting. We gave responses to questions that were submitting, submitted uh, at the March meeting. Uh, we had several questions that were submitted at the June 4th meeting, and we will have responses to those uh, questions that were submitted either on the June uh, 4th date during the meeting via the chat box or the call-in number, uh, and those that were received since then using our public input site. So the question we received was, will the state continue to maintain Highway 12 from the roundabout to the north end of the Merlo Beach neighborhood. Uh, we'll go back to our December 5th, 2019 presentation where we indicated the section of existing NC-12 between the roundabout and the southern refuge boundary will be retained and maintained by NCDOT as a local road which would be serving the adjacent development. The road will end approximately 33 feet south of the refuge boundary. NCDOT will continue to maintain that portion of NC-12 located within the existing easement north of the northern terminus of the bridge. How far north will the road be open after bridge completion? Once the bridge is completed, the highway will terminate approximately 33 feet south of the refuge boundary. This would be just north of Green Lantern Court. Now, upon completion of the bridge, all pavement between that 33 feet south, in other words, at the refuge boundary, and the northern terminus of the bridge will be removed. After the existing Highway 12 is removed north of Mirlo Beach, will any protective measures be put in place to keep the island from eroding from the north southward to the Mirlo Beach neighborhood? As a restatement of what we presented on December 5, 2019, the current alignment of NC-12 within the Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge, which we refer to as the refuge, was constructed within an easement granted to NCDOT from the refuge. 
the new bridge will bypass approximately 1.8 miles of existing NC-12 pavement within the refuge. That portion of the existing transportation easement between the southern refuge boundary and the northern bridge terminus shall be returned to the refuge. Now, as requ a requirement of the easement deed is that NCDOT regrade the roadbed included but not limited to the pavement area, embankments and or roadway ditches and shall return the area to a condition similar to its surroundings. For our current Coastal Area Management Act, or CAMA permit, and past permits, the sandbags both within the refuge and outside of the refuge are permitted for the purposes of protecting NC-12. Upon completion of the bridge and removal of the 1.8 mile section of current NC-12 within the refuge, the CAMA permit for B2500B stipulates that all sandbags permitted to protect that portion of NC-12 within the refuge shall be removed. Now, please note that sandbags south of the refuge boundary will remain in place. Any sandbag placement or modifications within the CAMA area of environmental concern, known as the AEC, that are needed for any other purposes would require permitting by CAMA. Will there be per parking on NC-12 at the refuge? There will not be parking at the southern boundary of the refuge, which is north of Green Lantern Court. As part of the Rodanthe Bridge project, the NCDOT uh, NC will construct a parking lot approximately one half mile north of the new bridge. The new parking lot will be the replacement for the bridge that was removed at New Inlet for the Captain Etheridge Bridge. Replacement lot. Pardon? It's a repl repl <coughs> replacement lot. Okay. Oh, as a replace, I'm sorry, a replacement parking lot. <clears throat> Will the fence across from 23183 Pappy Lane be replaced? No, that fence will not be replaced. Trash and debris along the shoreline is an issue. Can weekly cleanup be performed? The contractor is providing weekly sweeps of the shoreline. Sweeps have been mainly in the construction areas, however, Due to southwesterly winds, the contractor has been asked to begin sweeping more northerly areas as well. We ask that you please reach out to Pablo if there are other areas of concern. Will the ranger station be open after construction? Assuming that this question is actually referring to the visitor center on the refuge, which is approximately five miles south of Oregon Inlet, the refuge elevated the building in late spring of 2020. It's currently closed due to COVID-19. So for additional information, we ask that you contact the Pea Island Wildlife Refuge, and their number is 252-987-2394. Now, I'll turn it over to Pablo for our September 3rd update. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Diane, for that uh, recap of uh, the questions and the previous meeting. Um, just moving forward here with, uh, with our presentation tonight, uh, just give you a quick update of where things are at with the project. And okay, um, uh, as, as of today, um, uh, we've just completed updating um, um, some of our spreadsheets where we track the progress of the project, and uh, we're just about forty-six percent complete. 
um, and that's in terms of the actual um, physical construction on the project. Um, another measure of progress is our expenditures. Um, our expenditures as of August 24th, which is uh, every 20, the 24th of every month is, is uh, a measurement data point for our uh, uh, payments to the contractors. Uh, we're just a, uh, just under one point, or one hundred and one million dollars. Uh, and just a reminder that includes the design and permitting phase of the project uh, that took place in the the twenty seventeen early twenty eighteen timeframe. Um, because this is a design build project, uh, the overall contract value, just as a reminder, is uh, just a little over one hundred and forty five million dollars. Uh, in terms of actual um, uh, physical completion of the bridge, one of the measurement points that we use and a lot of people can understand is the number of bents. Uh, those are the rows of piling that support the actual driving surface of the bridge. Um, we've completed 52 out of 108 bents. Uh, which that equals 189 out of 352 piles that will uh, totally be installed on the project to support the structure. Um, another measurement is uh, the, the actual road spans or deck spans that have been completed and 43 of 107 of those spans have been completed. Just to give a quick snapshot of what's taken place and what we expect to happen. Um, on the north end of the project, uh, pile insta installation has been more challenging than we've expected. Uh, we, you know, we recognize we've received a few comments uh, uh, from the public uh, and, from, and from the media on past meetings uh, regarding the north end is going slower than the south end. Uh, we have tried different techniques to uh, to install the pile and 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 make for an ease easier installation. Uh, one of the methods that we're doing right now is usually utilizing a 36 inch diameter uh, auger, and this auger is used inside the hollow concrete cylinder pile to loosen the soil so that hopefully uh, we can advance that pile in the ground just like a giant cookie cutter. So, um, Moving to the south end of the project, just as a quick reminder, you know, we did do uh, a lot of roadway work, which included drainage pipes and some of the paving and curbing for the roundabout in April of 2020. Um, we were anticipating some more of that work to take place this summer, but uh, with scheduling with our subcontractor that's doing that work, um, right now it's looking like that will probably take place in the October timeframe. Um, uh, should have some impacts uh, um, on uh, the traveling public, but I don't, we don't expect a tremendous number of lane closures. Uh, for that paving and, and curbing that will take place. Uh, when we do begin those lane closures, we will be announcing that through uh, social media as well as through press release. Uh, also with uh, the, the coming fall weather, um, we are hoping that the early morning concrete placements uh, will be reduced or eliminated. Um, however, this could change due to scheduling demands, and those scheduling demands are always going to be very subject to uh, weather, uh, the material suppliers, as well as how our pile driving operations are going. Uh, one of the other operations that will take place, we anticipate this fall, is uh, K Patterson Electric Cooperative uh, will begin phase one of their relocation of the transmission lines. Uh, this will not 
uh, this, this is one of several phases that will take place throughout the next year for them to actually move the trans transmission lines onto the structure. So there will be activities taking place at the very south end of the project and at the north end of the project that Cape Hatteras Electric and their, their contractors will be doing and occupying the same space as the bridge contractor, uh, flat iron construction. The goal is to stage those and phase those so that uh, the, the activities do not impact the adjacent contractor when he's doing their work. Um, and again, we're still targeting the fall of 2021 for bridge completion, uh, such that we would have traffic on the structure in fall of 21. And with that, uh, here's my contact information. Uh, again, feel if there's any concerns with the, uh, as Diane mentioned earlier about the shoreline, um, you know, any debris, trash that, that happens to uh, wash up on the shoreline that's bridge related, uh, you know, hopefully we'll capture that with our weekly sweeps. But uh, if you have any questions or further concerns, Here's my contact info, and please reach out to us. And as you can see, our next update is uh, December 3rd. It'll be 6 to 8 p.m. Um, we're saying location to be announced simply because we don't know um, at this time whether it will be another meeting like this or we'll be able to have an in-person meeting. So um, we, we will be announcing that sometime mid-November uh, once we find out where we are with in-person meetings. And it looks like we may have received a couple of chat comments um, here. Yeah, so the question regarding uh, where the end of the road, where the road ends at Merlo, uh, the department does not intend to uh, install any sandbags or dunes at the end of the road uh, initially. Uh, we do not have that in our plans. That's not in the scope of work with, under this contract. Uh, as for the fence, uh, the fence was acquired as part of uh, the property that the department acquired, and the fence is interfering with the construction of the uh, embankment, as well as uh, providing a chain link security fence that the contractors installed. And at this time, we do not see the need to reinstall that fence. We welcome any other questions or comments if you put them in the chat box or call the phone number. We have no call-ins, and it seems we have no other comments or questions in the chat box. Uh, we will leave this open uh, for another half hour, give people time in case they're running late to come in and, and ask any questions. But I appreciate you all being here, and I hope that um, if you do have comments or questions uh, or need to reach out, you'll either reach out to Pablo uh, you can always call that 855 number uh, and you can email the directly to the nc12 rodanthe at publicinput.com and we'll get um, we'll get those to the project team to get back to you and we'll include them on the December meeting.
we have another question. Um, has work on the bridge been stopped while the while they investigate the unfortunate accident? Uh, the work resumed Friday, uh, August. Uh, I'm trying to look at the calendar, right? August 28th. So work has resumed on the project as of August 28th. Uh, question is, has this been recorded so we can hear the presentation? Yes. Um, I'd ask that you make sure that you're on the email list, and as soon as a it's been posted to a location, we will send you a link to let you know that it is, um, is available. And you can do that by sending an email to the nc 12 rodanth rodanthe at publicinput.com, um, and we'll make sure that you're that you get a copy of that.
Um, we have another question. Uh, are there any up-to-date photos of construction to share? Uh, yes, we do have some uh, some photos that we can share. And I guess at this time, I would just ask if you could email the uh, the the NC12 Rodanthe uh, project. Um, I don't know, Diane, if you can bring up the the email address on that okay. slide. Yes, if you could email us at that. Um, you know we can let you know when those e those those photos are posted and where they'll be posted. Um, the Rodanthe Bridge project website would would be the should be the host platform for where those photos would be located. But I need to double check that. Communications. Just say that. All right, so we had a question about what will the traffic pattern be at the southern end of the rotary and how will congestion be minimized? Um, we ask that you take a look at the um, NC12 webpage uh, for DO NCDOT and review the roundabout video, which explains how roundabouts handle traffic um, and congestion. Um, better than traffic signals do and how they actually work.
Well, we haven't received any new uh, chat comments or questions, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Um, again, I invite you to, you know, call in um, on that 855 number listed on the screen or to Pablo or to uh, send an email to nc 12 rodanthe at publicinput.com. Uh, if you do have questions or comments, we'll field them for you anytime. In the meantime, uh, watch for that email to come out um, with the information on where you can view the PowerPoint and listen to the uh, voiceover from the meeting. And thank you all for being here. I hope that we'll see you all again and maybe in person by December 3rd. Um, thanks again and good night. chat log.